part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I quit. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the Krypton Report. <laughs> I am James, the Superman Red. And with me is Tyler, Superman Blue. Or hey, everybody. Well, he was. He quit. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I- I'm, I'm back. I'm back. You know, just gotta, we got to start the show off different. We are the Krypton Report. We need like a really cool like news team assemble type thing that's just us two. <laughs> Krypton report assemble. James with sports. <laughs> they played ball. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> Tyler with weather. Well, it's rainy outside. Brian at the news desk. And then our forefront and anch- lead anchor, Jania. Go f- yourself, everybody. <laughs> you know what That's grinds what... my gears? <laughs> what, James? <laughs> ah, it's just a grind. Grinds my gears segment. I didn't really have anything prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always be like taxes, taxes, right? <laughs> always. <laughs> oh, so, uh, speaking of taxes, I had to talk to some students today. And they were doing an, an activity for government and economics. About taxes, and I was like, "You want you want a great visual representation of how the government does taxes? Imagine that you're getting a a Snickers candy bar, right? You got your big old Snickers, and then when they hand it to you, it's a fun size. That's them taking their taxes, and that's what you get. Welcome to life, the fun size. I was like, you can carry oh, that to life. It's awful. It's so sad. It is." Okay, so this is not the uh, <laughs> whatever this is. I don't even know. But hey, how's it going, man? How's your week been? Uh, uh, you know, started out pretty good. So it's early. So I, I, I'm everything's going well. Good, good. Um, uh, we don't have a whole lot of news. The only thing I have for news is that we saw a picture of, like, Red Death on the set of The Flash. So it looks like there's actually the Red Death costume. And then there's, you know, Batwoman as well. So we'll see whatever it is going on with that. Um, But that's all I really had. Everything else I feel like has just been fluff talk. You know, nothing, nothing I feel like diving into or really, like, going on about or anything. It's all just kind of been speculation or he said this and people yeah. trying to dissect a well, bunch of crap yeah well you know what i guess the only thing we can specifically say because james gunn is one of the co ccos of dc studios is he's been active just posting some photos of dc characters this is true that yes so we can't really get into anything deeper than that yeah i mean he, he's <laughs> done lobo and mr terrific so i think it's it's a it's a good way of putting it out there of characters maybe he's interested in and just seeing the kind of feedback that people give um but i mean that's been about it so all right we're going to dig into some comics and like we said on our last episode is we're going to we're going to catch up with the comics pulls that we have and then we're going to shift gears a little bit because of the ultra app but first james tell us about ultra man you were going off and on it about uh before we started and i was like why are we not recording this so we, <laughs> we kind of put a pin in it so tell us about your ultra experience um well you know the the books are only a month behind so you know you can catch up and read a lot of the things that i mean just 
books that came out last month. Um, you're current on the story. I mean, you're that's not that far behind. Most people, uh, their their reading stack continues to grow, and they don't get to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that way when I put more and more books on my list. But um, so I kind of after I got Ultra, I picked up where I had left off, which was Batman Fear State, which was a little bit ago. But I was able to finish it all up. And from there, I was reading the mainline Batman book, a couple of issues, and then you get to Shadow War. Well, you can jump right over, like Shadow War is Batman, Deathstroke, Inc., and Robin, like a crossover of those three books. And, you know, I just caught up to that on all three of those books. I read Tom Taylor's Nightwing. I caught up on all of that. And literally today, another book dropped. So I'll be one issue behind when I <laughs> when I read that again. Um, you know, I'm I'm coming up to the Shadow War here. I'm interested to read the. So James, have you watched the newest episode of episode three of Titans? <sighs> you know, put me on the spot like that. No, I haven't. Yeah. What? Why are you even my co-host, man? Why, why do I bring you on here? Um, <laughs> well, normally you tell me what we're talking about, and I and I make sure to get it get it in. <laughs> nah, I just this is I just want to say like this last episode of Titans, the episode entitled Jinx. No spoilers here. It sucked. Um, <clears throat> it has it has like three it has three storylines in it, and there and this I won't spoil anything for you. But I really like Connor in that episode and how they're utilizing him, his storyline. And I was like, this is really cool. The Dick storyline in that is garbage. And I'll leave it at that. Um, But the one thing that I'm loving that they're doing with Superboy, and this is something I did in season two that I'm just reiterating, is when he uses his x-ray vision, his eyes go white. And they kind of like glow. And I'm just really happy that they've kind of tried to find a way to show that power. Yeah, I mean, something a little more than just like staring intently at something. (laughs) Trying to do something with your eyes. (laughs) Stare over here. Look, look, look at me. Look, Okay. Look at me, but try and look through me. Pretend like you're looking past me. Look into my eyes. All right. And good. We got it. Cut. Pray. Roll. So. But yeah, I just want to see when you do watch Titans episode three. Just remember what Tyler said. The Connor stuff was dope. <laughs> I I look forward to it. You know, I mean, we're we're supposed to get more. Uh, some more Superboy, some more Connor stuff this season. Superboy, Connor, Connor. I was trying to do a Paul Rudd impression. It sucks. I'm tired. I need to stop. Let's get on with the show. Amazon books and go up to trial of trials of the Amazons. Um, I mean, there's just there's so much on there right now. I've probably read, I've read, I've added about seventy five books in the last uh, couple of weeks to my reading history and I mean at 3.99 a, a piece when you have to buy them I mean that's I paid my 100 for the year I've already read that so that's it's a really awesome experience good I mean and that's part of why we're just getting to the point where we're refocusing on the current books because it's just been a lot. I mean, I mean, it's it's just well these days everything's a lot. Everything costs so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it's it's sometimes you got to cut corners where you got to cut them. And I've always been a fan of physical, you know. And I'm gonna continue to um, grow my physical media. It'll probably be at a slower rate than it was before, but. Um, 
sometimes, you know, I mean, a hundred bucks for a year and I can read, I can be current on all my books. It's, and more, so much more. It's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a good, good saving measure, honestly. Oh, I, I, uh, I agree (laughs) with that. Because I just feel like, I don't know, I just feel like there's a lot that I get sucked into. I'm like, oh man, I want to read this. And then the story's just, I don't know, the story's not that great, to be honest. And then you're like, I just wasted like 10 bucks. (laughs) And I'm like, you know what? (laughs) If I read it on the app, I'll be like, oh, that was okay. Good thing I didn't have to pay too much for it. I mean that that's that's certainly a thought. Um It's yeah, I just I've really had a good time with it, you know. Um I've been on and off with digital reading and physical reading and my thing about uh, digital reading is I really am not a huge fan of having to open read stuff on my phone. Um Oh yeah, no, I I re- I stick to my my reading on my tablet. And since like they updated the app and it no longer worked with my iPad anymore, I really slowed down my digital reading. Um, oh man, because I had That's to use tragic. it on like from the web page, and it just yeah adds adds a little more steps, a little more complexity to it. Yeah, but. Let's uh let's get into some reading some comics. First one I got is Batman Superman's World's Finest number eight. The new dynamic duo. Which is f- pretty fitting for this issue, actually. I'm I'm loving the artwork for this story. I'm enjoying the story. But I'm not loving it as much as I wanted to. The artwork is really good. The stories and the way they play out are very um, old school, like almost Silver Age. Yeah, I can see that. And I don't, I'm not saying that as a bad and thing. I just... No. But it's it's not written Silver Age either. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, <laughs> those were some, some word-heavy books. Yes, they were. Um the yeah, the art is fantastic. Um you know, I mean same. Same. Uh, it's just As much as I hate to say it, I mean it's Batman Superman, it's written by Mark Wade. I just I just don't feel like I'm connecting with it as much. I don't know. I mean it kind of dropped down on my like my reading list, like when I get books. Like I'll pick up other books before this, I, I would say. I mean, you know, of it is, but like, I'm enjoying it. But like I said, yeah, it's not my first book. I it's crack. world's finest, but they're so like. But we're dealing with Supergirl, Robin, and now this new uh, character, and <laughs> Boy Thunder. Yeah. And I'm just like, how about just Batman, and Superman? Like, what, what, where are they at? You know, and this this book has. Donna Troy, Speedy, Kid Flash, you know, up here. Garth Aqualad. (laughs) But this, okay, so this issue is they're training, you know, Boy Thunder. And it starts off where they're trying to get him to do something and Speedy's shooting an arrow at him. A boxing glove arrow. He's trying to use his powers. And... This, I don't really understand this villain, okay? I'm going to be real with you. (laughs) I get what they're trying to say, but uh, it just seemed really weird. Like, he looks like... um, I mean, it, you you can think of you can th- what he does on on a massive scale that is happening, like it's pretty, it's pretty crazy how how affecting 
how effective it is. Yeah. The ultimate luck. Um, yeah, he... Uh, ent- entomophobia. Yeah, he's, he's called the key, and he looks like something out of Voltron. Like, he looks menacing to just... He, he makes people be afraid to, like, go outside. Like, leave a door, leave a window. <laughs> like, yeah, everyone... And I'm just like, this is creepy, but yet somehow it feels very cheesy at the same time. I, I don't know. I'm not just I'm just like, I'm trying to figure this out. And Batman and Robin are stuck in the Batcave. Because Robin says, um, where is it? I can steer you to the most urgent notice, Batman. Um, he says, if we could, but we're victims too. For all intents and purposes, Robin, I and R are locked inside the Batcave. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, although he does get down to business in the Batcave. I mean, yeah, he does. Like, I guess if there's if there's a one place you want to be locked in, it might be the Batcave. Or a shopping mall. You can st- <laughs> still, yeah, or a shopping mall. <laughs> I mean, you know, if there are zombies outside. Mm-hmm. You know, they talk about how Supergirl is vaporizing entire walls so doctors can access rooms. Yeah, Superman's ripping open uh, ambulances so there are no doors left. Like, people are basically outside. It's it's like, all right. I don't, I don't know. I feel like for this to really work with me, I needed more than one issue of just being rushed. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it would have been something more to build to and see actually how it's affecting people more. Um, so they send David, also known as Boy Thunder, to a coal mine of people stuck inside the coal mine. And he goes and he flips the switch. And basically, it's not, nothing's happening. And they say, like, his powers, um, he could set off you know, a fire. He steadies his powers. And then he just says, I'm sorry, and he takes off. Leaving the coal miners. And Superman, meanwhile, um, is dealing with stuff. And then we get a cutback of David on his planet. People yelling, please help me. And he says, I can't. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. I don't know. And, you know, we see people on fire and then we see david's eyes look all i i'll be honest i thought he was going to go down there and blow up the coal miners because like the look on his eyes and then we see him flying <laughs> towards it i thought he was about to snap um and then superman and superman, well that that would have been a real twist i mean that's where i was i was like going with this um you know superman gets there and we see that david's already got there and uh and then we find out that uh, the best part of the whole book for me is uh, remember how I had someone working on an antidote, said Batman. And Robin says, can I say it to him? Can I? I'm dying to. Let me go. Robin says, hey, Superman, <laughs> look up in the sky and it's Blue Beetle, um, you know, dropping the antidote. So that was that was cool. Um, I like the design for Supergirl in this book. And Supergirl's trying to talk to David, and she's telling him about Argo City. And I think it's a cool explanation. I think it's an, it's an interesting story about basically how it seems just a little tweak than what we're used to um, with the idea that Argo City survived the explosion. And then uh-huh. it was dying, so then Kara Kara was sur- saved by being launched from Argo City. And then uh, a meteor storm eventually wiped out Argo. My parents just man- managed to rocket me alone to Earth. And we see David like in a flashback of like arguing with his parents. And the last page is the key, who looks like a, he should be fighting the Witcher somewhere. Uh, he even has keys at the end of his long white hair. 
going into a room and saying that he has a new sidekick and it's the Joker. Yeah. Um, well, the interesting thing there is with that, with David's memory is she says, uh, um, but remind yourself every day, David, that nothing you could have done, uh, that there's nothing you could have done and that's okay. What happened was not your fault. Right. And it's kind of, and she questions him and he kind of, I don't know, looks guilty when he says, yeah, right. He does. So maybe there's something more that we didn't see during the escape in, in that well, issue. Loads more. Um, them all. And then, you know, Superman has a new sidekick and of course the Joker <laughs> Love sidekicks. You, you know what? I wasn't even like excited or anything to see the Joker because I feel like he's gotten played out. I don't know. No. I mean, I saw the Joker. I was like, oh, oh crap! Like, I did. I didn't expect the Joker to be waiting for anybody. Maybe I'm just old and jaded in my old age. I'm just like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> but let's go over to our book that has returned to us. Dark Knights of Steel. James, why don't you take the lead? Yeah, on this that was one? a little hiatus. Take the lead on this one. All right, give me a second. Switch him around. Yeah. James is like, whoa, we put him in the spot, man. I gotta put one away to get the other one out. Um. <clears throat> So it's the the War of the Three Kingdoms, and we see that Lex, the Jokerized Lex, um, is is talking back and forth with the Ring. Um, it's uh, the Ring almost seems like um, like Power That's Ring, yeah. you know, from Earth Three, where it's kind of talking negative to the person. Um. The Amazons join forces with um, uh, Anissa's army. So, Queen Anissa. We, you know, last we left Jefferson and uh, her brother were both assassinated. Yep. I'll tell you, um, this this is one book when it's finished, I want to give to Jania to read. Because I think she'll really dig it. And being yeah. just a self-contained story, I think she'll really dig it. Oh, I think I think JB will enjoy it as well, um, because this this time period is also this this fantasy um, time period and and uh, everything that's happening is is right up her alley. <laughs> I mean, which is and it's right up mine, which is why I'm enjoying it so much. Uh, Lois approaches Constantine. Constantine is hiding something. Of oh yeah, um, she's she says something feels wrong. The deaths, the sudden escalation of violence. So yeah, she she feels like. Like things are being pushed forward, you know. Uh, back in the L dungeons, got uh, Oliver <laughs> being able to shoot off Canary's um, uh, mouth guard, awesome. so she can't scream. And then I love that it's Oliver and Canary. But look, Oliver's already lost his arm. Yes, he has. Like, Man, come on, already. Well. Oliver killed the king. Oliver fired the arrow, the magic arrow created by now we know Lex Luthor. I know. I'm like, man, already lost his arm. <laughs> right. Um, so General Waller and Harley Quinn go out to meet Anissa and Hippolyta. Um try to discuss terms. Uh, trying to get them to surrender and end the war before it starts. Uh, my army will, and, and nothing goes well. My army will see you on the other side of the forest. Um, 
you know, Constantine, he's, uh, you know, don't let him leave. It's just the two of them. Um, and Hippolyta says that would not be honorable. And he's like, to hell with honor. <laughs> and the forest is alive. Yup. So Ivy, she's there. She's there to protect Harley. Yeah, she is. Got uh, all the Amazons, everybody fighting. And Joker Lex comes in, basically like kamikaze bombs I mean, her. Even the ring was more like power rings than an actual lantern ring, you know? Yeah. Um, Laura, what happened? Uh, diplomacy went about as well as I suggested it would. Um, Archer's Waller has the, the command, and we hear hold, hold your fire, and there's Diana and um, Zara. No one you. dies. Agreed. Turn your armies around. It's not too late. And then um, we see Constantine. He's up to it again. Yep. Constantine has the resurrected uh, prince or would be king. And he said, uh, um, he said, I'd make it rain in her lungs. He says, now do it, Jacob. And he starts collecting, uh, he starts drowning Zara, starts drowning uh, her by just forcing water into her lungs. And then we hear fall uh, back and then boom. Yeah. Uh, his, well, the, he says, John, I don't know if I can. I've been beyond. I don't want to send anyone else to their death. He says, uh, she took your father, Jacob. Don't waver. Avenge him. And Diana is, you know, who's doing this? Stop. Um, and by the gods fall back, Lara, uh, Lara comes out onto the battlefield. She, uh, Create such a like a massive shock wave, like the carriage and the horses goes flying, tumbling through the air, which uh, the prince Jacob gets his head knocked, uh, gets his head knocked. You can see he's bleeding, and um, Zara starts uh, being able to breathe. I love the bottom panel, uh, Queen, Hip- where it just says Lara, <laughs> and like you see her in the show with the yeah. little red eye. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, just don't do anything foolish. Uh, if you love your people, surrender. Um, she says we already we have your son already, and Anissa didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. Says uh, you know come peacefully, and Anissa says no. They have to pay for what they did. Um, and she's no one has to die. I give you my word. And Laura says, "Where's the fun in that?" And cuts Queen Apollida in half, dude, with her heat vision. Like, yeah, yeah man. That next, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> that page, I was like, "Holy wow!" And we have Diana screaming, "Mother!" And I was just kind of like, I'm sitting to myself thinking. Yeah, it's about every time I feel when me and Jania's moms get together. Which one's going to snap and murder the other one? <laughs> but man, this, this is yeah, such that's, a good story. That I just... That's a, that's, that's a turning point. Like, what's going to happen now? Like, is Wonder Woman going to... Some Romeo and Juliet. Turn girl. sides and fight against Zara and Lara and everybody and... Yeah, I mean, she'll probably... Like she freaking incinerates her. She cuts her in half. And... I, I don't even... <laughs> like, it's nuts. I don't even know where to go. 
don't even know where to go. I'm just like, this is intense. But I'm all right, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's, it's it's the one book that I probably look forward to the most right now because it literally can do whatever it wants. Oh yeah, this is one I'm actually gonna I'm gonna keep buying until I get until it's yeah. over with. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Four more to go. Yep. And yeah, it's, it's it'll be a, it'll be fun to go back and read again. All right, so yeah, when it's all done, up, it's, it'll be fun to reread from front to back. Action ten forty eight. I got the I guess the basic cover for it because my comic guy sucks and doesn't always hold off on my comic stuff. You get me? Um. The artwork for this issue is cool, but I don't like the coloring. Um, it's very burnt orange, not even like sepia, but I just I don't like the coloring for it. And I'm gonna be flat out honest with you, I didn't really like the issue. It felt a little disconjointed. I it had more questions. The appearance of Bibbo felt out of place. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just throwing this out there. I'm just this has probably been one issue of Superman in Action Comics that I just was kind of like, eh. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I just didn't really like this issue. I mean, I like the the interaction between Metallo and Lex, where you basically understand that Lex is setting Metallo doesn't want anything to do with him and just wants to live out his days and. Lex makes the off comment about Metallo's sister visiting every Sunday. And then at the end of the, the book, we find out that she's not coming, that she missed her visit, and you pretty much know that Lex probably did something to her. Um, but yeah, what are your yeah. thoughts? You, you can you can take it from there. Uh, I've I've I just the way that this story kind of plays out. I just I don't know. I didn't really like it. Um. I mean, you know, honestly, when it comes to the art, you know, I like the the stuff that was easier to 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 look at and read and digest was um, like the Lex and Metallo stuff, um, Superman in space. Um, but there was just yeah, everything was like orange and yellow. Yeah. Um. The art, it was just a little different, you know. Yeah, because we, have no we came off of the, we just came off the other action art, which was really well, really well done. Because it's not so much the art as the coloring. I'm not trying to be like a downer here. I'm, I'm really, really not. Like that's not me at all. But. Yeah, well, we get a continuation of the story from War World. Um, you know, we we've got the building up of the story with Lex and Metallo um, that we've had the last couple of issues, uh, but we've got a continuation from War World. Um, the children on War World that uh, Kal El rescued and said could stay with him. Um, couple of the Felosian children. Um, so it's just like introducing them to Earth. They're at the zoo. They're looking at stuff. And that's where we get the Bibbo appearance. Um, you know, uh, Clark's doing his thing out in space. Um, okay, my question about the kids. Weren't weren't they part of the Felosians? Or were they just Warzoon people? Because I thought the kids had powers too, or would have powers on Earth. That was my biggest kind of misstep here of what was going on. Was right because I thought um, they were part of that group. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I kind of assume they were too, but also we had seen that. Uh, the Felosians didn't have the same reaction under the the sun 
and uh, like Theola is like powered by Genesis. I guess that's true. I know. I mean, I guess I was thinking because you know, comic soliciting anymore sucks because they're showing us like the covers and storylines for books months away. I mean, the the newest issue of Comic Shop News uh, has it has the Super Family on it, where it's Superman, the the two kids, John in a new suit, Connor, Supergirl in a new suit. The Superman of China, and then uh, Nat Steel. <laughs> uh, so I, I just was like, oh, so I, so I, I had that before I read my book. So like, I just was thinking, oh, the kids have powers. What, what, what's going on here? Oh, right. But I don't know. Um. Well, then we get uh, the appearance of some new gods. Uh. It appears to be Desaad, Calabac, and Orion. Which I thought was weird because Orion's usually like on their team, you know. And I felt like this was really just kind of like, whoa, like what's going on? Especially with Orion, like. And then Bibbo goes to punch Calabac, and I was like, really? <laughs> right. Man. Yeah, I was like, oh man, I like, like Bibbo's gonna be saved by Superman once again because otherwise this dude would get smashed. I like Bibbo, but I, you know, sometimes they 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 try to write him with his accent and it just comes off weird. Right, Superman, S O O P E R M A N. Um. But yeah, Super Metron shows up, and they're talking about um, they want the fire of Olgren. Yeah, so Olgren is one of the old gods. Yeah, one of his seven aspects is awakened in you. The madness that once took Olgren will take you next. It is inevitable. And they're like, it's not in Superman. It's in the boy. And the boy is Olgren's heir. And Superman's like, over my dead body. Enough of this. The boy truly holds the fire of Olgren. Then we... Then let us learn what we can from... Boom. Superman punches Orion in the face. In the face. Yeah, he does. Like, he rocks him hard. <laughs> and, uh... He's Orion's like take them, and you see Superman fighting Orion and Calabac while Metron just sits there, <laughs> and he's just <laughs> and it's kind of weird, yep. Because I mean, I do kind of think it's interesting, um, where we have the two guards on Strikers Island talking about how since Superman came back, already aliens are invading, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then that's where we have the. Uh, closes out with the Metallo and it says the next is Superman versus the new gods in action 1049 I believe so, and that's kal Returns part 3 yep which is weird because these yeah. kal Return stories fit but like they fit together but don't fit together <laughs> you know it's like this one doesn't really feel like it, it connects with where we have Superman, Son of Kal El. Yeah, part part two on Son of Kal El, because part one is Action Comics, uh, ten forty seven. You know, and then part four is the next issue of Superman, Son of Kal El. It's like, well, that's not him versus the New Gods, so it's just kind of weird. Did you read Rebel Moon Part Two? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did read Red Moon. Oh, yeah. Not Rebel oh, Moon. Oh, that's another Freudian slip. <laughs> Red Moon. Yes, that's it. Um. Yeah. the The War Zoons are on Earth. They're looking for. They're looking for him all over the place. Um. Super Supergirl is trying to work with Thaola about uh on her flying and everything, while people are. Uh, we got Connor searching. Um, 
they're searching all over the world, Metropolis, Gotham, Shanghai, Mexico City, every major population center. Um, uh, the Superman of China, uh, John Kent's suit uh, is in Atlantis. Yeah, Steel and uh, Steel. Yeah, <laughs> John and Natasha steel and uh, surging around. <laughs> right, Steel and Steelier. <laughs> steel, S T E E L, and Steel, S T E A L. <laughs> They're like, we're really going to mess with you now. Right. Uh, and then Superman, yeah, they're just, they're looking all over. Uh, Theola is telling the story of, um, uh, what is, what is his name? They say his name. The oldest living Warzoon. Yeah. Chaitil? Uh, Chaitil, yeah. Ch- Chaitil. Yeah, that's who they're search- searching for. Um. She tells the story of him, his savagery. He's lived so long. Um, he's killed like thousands. Um, and they're searching for him. And uh, she starts, she starts hearing um, like super, uh, like her super hearing kicks in. Um, and she can hear Chadel. And so she, uh, she tells her where to look and Supergirl um, is watching. She drills a hole into the, uh, into the earth where they, uh, where she can hear him. Um, what does this say? He, uh, egg of a meteoric stone reaver and planted it beneath, <clears throat> beneath a city. Um, the egg hatched and there's this giant beast uh giant beast with horns and uh let's see does he call it something witness the creature that will reduce superman's chosen people to ash and bring his home crashing down upon thee <laughs> Okay. You know, I don't remember him really talking. Quite. Yeah. No. I mean, he did because it was always, you know, Mongol who was and Mongol who is. And... Yeah, he always talked a lot about nothing. <laughs> He's very, very verbose to say something uh, simple. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> but all right. That's our comics. Now we're going to jump in to our new segment. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. All right, so the other part of this week's episode is we're taking a look back. It has been... The time of this recording, it's been a little over a year. We were going to record this earlier, but life happens, people. Since Supergirl ended, Supergirl 
what you know one of the founding blocks of this of this podcast ran from october 26 2015 to november 9th to 2021 and we were going to look back at the pilot last year or last month but then we thought you know it's only like a week and a half week two weeks later that is the one year of the finale of the series so we thought we'd look back at the pilot which james and i never discussed the pilot together because james you joined after season one like we we started in season two together didn't we um i believe so i believe it was season two see this is how long we've been doing this <laughs> <laughs> right we're, we're starting to forget things and get old but yeah, yeah, I I know season one was was pretty much Jamesless. Um, so we like I said, we never talked the pilot. So here we are. We're going back. We're kind of honoring Supergirl the show with a one year, you know, a a a look back at the pilot one year after it ends, with just kind of how do you feel about it? Like, what were your thoughts and? As we get into it, James, let's just let's take it back for a moment. And what was your thoughts and experience with the announcement and the preparation for the show and the first time you were viewing it? What were your thoughts? Where were you headspace awaiting the watch the pilot of this show? Oh, um, take, take it back to 2015, James. Take it back to 2015. Oh. Can't hardly remember 2015. I know. (laughs) Um, No, I just, I remember that the show was, the announcement that the show was coming. Um, I, you know, kind of followed it, you know, found out it was coming out on CBS. um, You know, coming up in... Uh, that October, uh, you know, and I watched it October 26th, you know, I, I watched that pilot as it aired on TV, um, you know, and leading up to it, the trailers and stuff, you know, it got me really excited. I was, uh, I was happy to see a new show because at the time, you know, we had, um, we had Arrow. And we had the flash. So it was, it was this ever expanding thing. Um, and it was, it was really awesome to see that, you know, Supergirl, that this character was that another Kryptonian also, you know, was getting, getting their own show. What you? What were your thoughts going into it about the role that Superman may play in the show? Um, I mean, as 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 we got further along, you know, they had said that he was going to be like a background character that like we weren't really going to see him and stuff. And I mean, when when I kind of heard things like that, I kind of assumed that the show would do some of what it did, you know, mm-hmm. by taking some of uh, Superman's villains. But also, I think, you know, you see that in the comics where Supergirl would contend with some of the people that Superman does. It's true. It's true, people. It's true. Um. Yeah, I. Uh, so before we get into any other thoughts, before we get into the episode, I'll, I'll I'll say my my thoughts here. All right, I'll go. I remember when the show was announced, I was really excited. It was on going to be on CBS, which I thought was interesting because it was like one of the major networks that didn't jump on any kind of comic book. You know, it just seemed like we had Gotham on Fox. We had Krypton being talked about for sci-fi. 
of course, the CW, and then we had Constantine coming on uh, NBC, and then Supergirl's going to be on CBS. And saw the previews. It was getting exciting. And uh, I, I started the podcast because at the time I was doing the Gotham Before the Bath, the Gotham podcast, and I was also doing guesting on uh, the Flash Arrow Power Hour. That started to expand more as more shows were popping up. And I was like, I want to do this one. So I, at the network that I was part of, Southgate Media, I was like, I want to do the Supergirl show. And when we first started the podcast, it was just a review podcast of the Supergirl series. You know, the first season of the podcast was kind of who who are these characters that were being announced when they would announce when they announced James Olsen and then, of course, Kara. We, so we would do we did episodes kind of diving into the histories of the characters, who they are and. You know, building up and then when the show started, of course, it was called our, our podcast was called The Last Daughter of Krypton. And then I decided, you know what, I wanted to do more. So, of course, it, you know, morphed into Krypton Report and. And everything like that. And I've told that story. But during this time, I had a friend who got me, without me asking, the leaked version of the pilot. And do you think that I waited to watch that, James, or did I watch it right away? Oh, I bet you watched that right away. I watched it right away. And I recorded some thoughts, but I, I didn't release them. I was like, and then when the show aired, I watched it live on TV with my wife, with the wonderful, amazing Jania. And we watched it, and it was it was good. There was no difference in the pilot and then what was leaked. The same thing had happened before with uh, The Flash. That pilot got leaked before it premiered, and I did the same thing. And I remember watching and being very excited about the show. And... You know, we speculated before, like, what the role of Superman would be. Would this be a world without Superman, where it would basically be a Superman show with Supergirl? And then we had the pilot. And now we're going to talk about the pilot episode in depth. So, James, how was watching the pilot? When was the last time you watched it? Um... I probably started rewatching Supergirl a couple of years ago on Netflix. Um, watched, you know, a good half of the first season. Uh, that was probably the last time I watched the the pilot episode, which is probably only the second or third time, probably a third time I've seen it. I I think I've watched the pilot three times. Before three times before this, I think it's my fourth time watching it because I I watched it once when I watched the leak, and then I watched it live, and then I started to rewatch some stuff here and there, and then that was years ago. I think because I I was trying to do a rewatch few years back of like Supergirl and Flash or no, yeah and I got like through I did season one and two of Flash like it was nothing and Supergirl I just I didn't make it all the way through because I wanted to try to watch it with Sayla which I'm thinking about rewatching the first season because Sayla is more interested now but that's a side story and I I hadn't watched it. I've been wanting to revisit the series, but at the same time, just because of where the series went, some of it got so heavy and so disjointed that I didn't really feel like revisiting the show. But I will say watching the pilot again was so refreshing. It was just, it felt good. <laughs> you know, like, Oh yeah. Like I, I, yeah. it hit me it still hit all the emotional beats with me. It resonated. I still had that with the music, the, the way it was, you know, her saves her, uh, 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 like the way she just comes out and does, you know, being Supergirl and everything like it, it was, 
it was hitting all the beats again and i was like excited to watch it like and i forgot how much i really enjoyed the the first season <laughs> and i'm i'm really excited to kind of revisit it because it doesn't feel as weighed down as it will become and as i was watching it it's kind of weird to think about because you forget that the first season was produced in Los Angeles by CBS because then the rest, the next five seasons are all on the CW and it feels like a CW show. So, <laughs> right. So it felt, it felt different. I mean, they're in California, they're in Los Angeles. And, um, we have that awesome set for the, the cave bunker base for the DEO. Yeah, I was watching. I forgot about the cave. And I was, I was, I was watching how good the writing was of just setting up the engine for the show. You know, they're talking about um, Fort Roz's crash and that Alora jailed them, and how it really was a mother and daughter show. And it, and I was like, they talked about how she was lost in the Phantom Zone, and. And then I got thinking, like, did we ever learn what pulled her out of the Phantom Zone that helped pull Fort Roz to Earth? Um, I think there was some explanation, but I can't remember what it was. Um, you know, I, 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 yeah, I, I know that they, you know, in this episode at the DEO that they said that she pulled them out when she came out. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just like something, you know, they say like a misdirect for her to focus on something maybe she's guilty of, but I think something else, they opened up the Phantom Zone and to get Fort Roz out of there, and she was released at the same time. Mm. I think that's how it went. But I can't remember what it was. So, so I was that was exciting. Just like and they talk about how the people from Fort Roz escaped, but they haven't really been doing too much until recently. They started to act up again, and you know, I love her reveal to win. And what happens. And it was it was thrilling and exciting. And it was almost like I was ready for the show. Like, what is the show? You know? <laughs> like, what's gonna happen? And I'm like, wait, I know everything's gonna happen. Um I was excited, like the montage of when she's kind of piecing her suit together and she has like the the more Doc Martin boots on as she's stopping the bank robbery. Yeah. She doesn't have the symbol on yet and she's got the Doc Martin boots. And she's filming on the back lot of where they filmed Lois and Clark. So that was exciting. You remember that? Yeah. So nice little super nod there. And the one thing I was like, when is making her suit? <laughs> and I was like, how? Because later he has D D E O tech and that's, you know, oh, we just made it, you know, to do your O. But here he's putting together a suit and I'm like. Yeah, he's talking about like some sort of composite um, material for the cape. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, because we she had he's like, no cape. And he's like, oh, it's aerodynamic. Don't tell your cousin I said that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like capes suck. Capes are stupid. And then he's like, um, yeah, maybe this cape will hold up. and. At the end of the episode, you know, we 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 have James present Kara with something, and it's actually Cal's blanket. It's for her cape, and I was like, I feel like she shouldn't have had a cape the whole episode till the end, you know. And then this is how she actually got her cape. I I don't know. I, I was like, it could have been something like piecing the suit together. Um, I mean, it is a great scene when she comes walking out with the full Supergirl suit with the the long boots and the tights and everything like it was 
it was still thrilling and exciting for a pilot episode here for a series that I've seen that makes me, it makes me wonder what the show would have been if it hadn't left CBS. Right. Because there's a, there's a different feel, a tone, a vibe. Um, you know, cause they, they, you, you just moving location, they change crew, they change, um, a lot happens in the second season. You know, we lose a lot of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. You know, how did you feel about watching the pilot again with Cat Grant, like her character? Um, you know, she was. I forgot how like. I forgot how like pushy and not not pushy because she's always pushy. Um, how just like so much that it was, it was enough to be, or it, yeah, it was, it was so much to be who she is, a woman, um, running a multinational, uh, news outlet like that. And the way she was just like, Oh, you're fired. And then just like, Oh, well, see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, I, I don't want to say I don't like Cap, but at the same time, I was in this, in the pilot here, I'm just kind of like, ugh, like, you know, but her character, we get to see it develop more and grow, and it, it's cool. But that's, you know, that's something that we lost when we went to season two. We lost, you know, Lucy Lane when we went to season two. Yeah, we did. And I mean, Lucy wasn't in the pilot, but just talking about things that change, you know, the 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 desert bunker and all that. But there's there's such a the the episode is definitely a pilot. You know, unlike Lois and Clark, where the 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 first episode is basically a TV movie to launch the series. This is just a standard pilot that does a really good job of establishing everything, doing what it needs to do. At parts, I thought it could have breathed a little bit more, but it it, it worked. Um, and you know what? Like, I liked Alex again. <laughs> I feel like as the show went on, they just did some bad writing for Alex at times. Yeah, and it just felt like this was a a good strong character again. Um, and I I did like the line. I don't know if you caught it where when it's talking to Car about him and her, and he says the super friend, and she's like, "We're not calling ourselves that." And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, wait five years, Cara, then you'll be flipping right? and using it all the time." We're the super friends. <laughs> um. But this is the pilot is fun because the pilot is the one time you see David Harwood as Hank Henshaw. Because the whole time he is acting, he's Hank Henshaw. It wasn't until they were finishing shooting the pilot that Jeff John suggested the scene of his eyes going red and him being Martian Manhunter in disguise. So from the act and everything, he's playing the Hank Henshaw character. He's not playing Jean, playing Hank. He's, no. So there's there's a subtlety change when you get to the second episode in him. But how did you feel about that the first time you saw it and how you feel about it now when you find out he's Martian Manhunter? Um... You know, I just from just from knowing like where it goes and the fact that he gets to play Hank Henshaw again and like how dark and like anti um anti alien that he was. Uh huh. Um like he's Like he goes, he goes hard with it later, you know, 
Because he's he's very much that in this one. Because in this episode, we've got, like, aliens don't exist. What do you mean aliens don't exist? Superman is an alien. Yeah. Like, is he the only accepted alien? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Um. So it was it was interesting the way that they had his performance i really enjoyed um i think he did a really good job he was he was very much um hank henshaw um but he had a a likable quality he wasn't completely horrible but he was like because he's you know when when he, when Alex is you know is Car the reason I was, um, the reason I was recruited and he said yeah, but you're the reason you stayed. Um, it's a little a little bit of a you know a compliment talking up Alex's character. It was there was just a there was just a a soft side to to the edge he had the whole the whole episode. Yeah. So I I didn't I didn't think that it was I wasn't sure if they if they if that Hank Henshaw character was going to be the same one that we that we know and expect from from the comics at the time of watching it, you know? Mhm. No, I I 100% agree. Um, now when you watch that first episode and his eyes turn red, how did you, how did you react? Did you poop your pants? <laughs> well, I mean, I was like, oh man, you know, like, uh, I was like, is that, is that Martian Manhunter? Is that what, is that what we're doing here? And I was real excited about that. I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. This is amazing. Where's James? And Jenny was like, who's James? I said, oh, time dilation. You'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was excited. I, I, I geeked out. I got a, I got really, really pumped. Um, so it was it was nice. And I was glad they did it. And. Yeah, I, I I look back and I'm I'm thrilled at this pilot and I highly recommend the first season. And, you know, second season's good and season three, I need mean, season three I think was the best, but after that the show just it turns and becomes something different. You you flood it with side characters that you let take over all the attention and it just it loses its spark. You have some bad writing for some of the characters and I don't know. It was, it was nice to be back in the pilot and I I don't, I want to rewatch the live wire flash episode because that that's good. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen the, the first flash Supergirl crossover episode in a really long time. Like Obi Wan Kenobi, hearing old Ben Kenobi, because <laughs> like I've watched, um, I've watched the musical one, the musical episode, a few times with the music maestro. That's basically like Mister Mixes Pedalic, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we we're like, wait a minute, he's more powerful than he should be. This is the music maestro that I saw in Batman: and Brave and the Bold. <laughs> no, it was not the same music meister, but um I think I think the the way they used him and uh the the way the episode turned out, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it worked. It did work. But anything else we want to you want to say about the pilots of Supergirl watching it here now? Um I you know, I'm glad I rewatched it. It's been a while and 
it made me want to watch the rest. It made me want to watch the rest of the season uh, again. I haven't seen the first season in its entirety. Um, in uh, maybe at all, you know, maybe I don't think I've might've seen the, the first season in its, in its entirety since it aired on TV. Um, so it, it really makes me want to check that out. Um, and I, I'm certain I will again, mm-hmm. um, but not at the moment. Um, we are actually working on Smallville. Nice. Currently. I feel like with the way the shows are going in summer, I'll probably start revisiting things because it seems like certain things are slowing down. You know, we don't have it like we did for a while where we had so much of uh, shows being played over the summer and year round for our DC shows. And yeah, well, you know, like I said, we're, we got Smallville, we got Titans, Doom Patrol will be coming soon. Yeah, but that's going to be over in like a month, you know, like two months. So like I said, summertime, I'll have, a, yeah. I'll have some free time to kind of revisit things. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it's definitely want uh, something I want to do. Okay. Well, James, thanks for the chat, man. Looking back, um, I also want to point out to people: Supergirl Radio has been doing much like I experienced James with James Rebecca over on Supergirl Radio when she started. She didn't have her full time co host Morgan. So they've been kind of going back to certain episodes earlier in the show and reviewing them. And those are fun to catch if you get a chance. They do a lot more in-depth discussions and have done a lot more episodes than what uh, James and I are just kind of doing. We just want to do the one as a way of just looking back that it's been a year, James, without the Girl of Steel, the Maiden of Might. It's been a year. How do, How does that feel to you, like not having new Supergirl in your life? We didn't even get our Supergirl on the big screen like we were promised. So, yeah, yeah we we haven't gotten that Supergirl yet, and um, you know, with with Superman and Lois, we don't know that that will ever happen. I think it should. Um, I think because it's a different Earth, it would be great to see Melissa show up. Um, yeah, like she's coming. You know, ba- she's coming that. back from the future. You know, like she's been with the Legion the whole time. That explains why she's not been in any of the episodes. And we get to see her for like a two episode arc or something. Um, would be awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, the Young Justice tease of Supergirl we had there um, so far does not appear like that's going to get to play out at all. Which is very, very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to buy everything that I can. Young Justice. Well, I mean, that's how I felt with Star Girl. Like I bought the season of Star Girl because I was like, I wanted, and I tried to play it like in the background a couple times with the CW app or whatever, just to like I love this show because I do. Um. So I really wanted to support it in every way possible and then they canceled it but that's going to wrap us up here thanks james this is the krypton report signing off and remember look up in the sky we just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast please check out other podcasts on the press play podcast network 